Glory to Jesus. Praise be to God forever. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen and amen. Please turn around and tell three people good morning. I'm excited seeing you today. Good morning. I'm excited seeing you today. Good morning. I'm excited seeing you today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forever. I welcome everyone specially to the second service here this morning. By the grace of God, we exalt the name of the Father and we bless his precious and glorious name for another great opportunity. Once again, I want to thank God for the just concluded anniversary. It was such a glorious event. Thanking God for every one of you. It was great. We had a great time together and I was so blessed coming in your midst to have that great moment together. All the departments you over delivered. Hallelujah. Everybody from the beginning to the least of individuals, every activities. Hallelujah. Someone said to me, this is an organized and matured program. What a blessing. Once again, put those two hands. Everybody celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. Divine touch is going higher and higher. Celebrate yourself, everybody. Put those hands together. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And again, I believe if I have rebuked some certain things that wasn't done right, if it's done right, then I should also acknowledge it. At least for the first time in seven years, we can have a great program and our refreshment can go very peacefully and beautifully. Once again, to the leadership, to the ministers, to everyone that have contributed to making such an easy, beautiful event. God bless you. I thank you. And I bless God for your life. In the name of Jesus, you will keep going higher and higher. In the name of Jesus. And also got a report of some of you that, you know, we are gracious. You know, in rendering your physical service and rendering your financial services. Please understand, as I've said over time, Jesus Christ watches everybody. And is the one that rewards every man. Thank you. God bless you. And God reward you abundantly. In the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, in this second service, by God's grace, we shall celebrate one of our own. A dear son in the faith, hallelujah, that turned 40 years old yesterday in the person of ministry leader, Taye Omoyele. Hallelujah. 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 Now, don't get jealous and say, why is he pastor mentioned over and over? Amen. <laughs> 40 is a significant number. Hallelujah. And I believe next week I'll be celebrating the rest of the people. So in this second service, there will be a special thanksgiving to thank God for his life and his family. To God be the glory forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Yesterday, I mean, during the week, we had an aftershock um, as a result of an earthquake that hit New Jersey. Thank God that everybody is doing well. To God be the glory. Now, tomorrow, there's going to be another one. They call it, is it lunar or solar eclipse? Uh, it's a particular time where the sun, the, the moon will come under the sun. And for a significant number of hours or for the most part of the day, it's going to be dark. So don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. But let me say this now. In addition, more of such are still coming. I said it to you on the 31st night, and I repeat it again, that 2024 is going to be dark, and only those that carry the light that will thrive. So you have not seen anything yet. Hallelujah, you have not seen anything yet. But then, once you carry the light, you rejoice in the midst of darkness. I believe you know the Bible says that when men say there's casting down, there's gloominess, then I shall say there's a lifting up for me. So when we see all of these things, as believers, we don't run here and there. Are you hearing me now? We don't run here task scatter. We just hold on to the word of God and we shine as light to our world. We thank God and we give God all the praise. Hallelujah. This morning I'll be looking at Jesus is enough. Part two. Jesus is enough. That's our caption for the month. Jesus is enough. Part number two. Let's look at this morning. Colossians chapter one, verse 16 to verse 19. Colossians chapter number one, verse 16 to verse number 19. The Bible says, for by him were all things created in heaven, I mean, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to 19, yes? For by him, I believe it's up on the screen of your Bible, we can read it together, everybody. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Verse 17, everybody. And is before all things, and by him all things consist. And it is, and is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things it might have the preeminence. Verse 19. 
For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. I believe you know that the word him, him, him is referring to Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Father, we thank you this morning. Breathe afresh upon our heart and cause your word to come with life and power. And cause everyone that are hearing my voice this morning to be so blessed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated in heavenly places. Excited again to have you in church this morning. Again, I'm speaking on Jesus is enough. Part number two. Now, Paul the Apostle was addressing the people of Colossae. I was describing to them the totality of Jesus to mankind. And from that scripture, at least we can generate about five to six things that Paul the Apostle tried to present to the people that Jesus is to us. Number one. In verse number 16, he made it very clear that Jesus is a creator of everything. So, we call him the eternal creator. For by him were all things created, both in heaven and on earth. Before you came, the eternal creator was there. After your time on earth is over, the eternal creator will be there. So, Jesus... It's not only a nobody, but it's been described here as the eternal creator. Hallelujah. Number two. In, by him, all things consist. Hallelujah. By him, all things. That means without him, nothing will exist. Oh my God. Is this Jesus not enough? I'm asking you this morning. Is this Jesus not enough? Hallelujah. By him, all things that have ever existed, everything you have seen, and the one you have not yet seen, Bible says by him, all things consist together. So he's the one that created everything, is the one holding everything together in place. No wonder the Bible says he opponent everything by the word of his power. Number three. In verse 18, the Bible says that in all things he might have the preeminence over them all. In all things he might have the preeminence. No wonder someone said that one with Jesus is with the best majority. One with Jesus is with the best majority. If you are with the one that created heaven and earth, if you are with the one that they call eternal creator, if you are with the one that is sitting as head over principalities and power, if you are with the one that has the preeminence over everything, if you are with the one that by him all things consist, what else do you need? Hallelujah. Number three or number four, <laughs> in verse 19, the Bible says, It pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness of everything dwells. What other factor do we know about Jesus from this? In Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, you are complete in Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You are complete in Christ. Who is the head of principalities and power? So from today, when somebody look at you and say, one area is missing, you say, no, 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 no. You are not seen very well. I believe in the record of the Bible. I am complete in Christ. Who is the head of all principalities and power? Hold your neighbor with your two hands and say, neighbor, you are complete in Christ. Come and shake that neighbor and say, neighbor, you are complete in Christ. Come and shake that neighbor and say, neighbor, 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 you are complete in Christ. Who is the head of our principalities and power? Somebody shout the loudest amen in this building. Hallelujah. And the other day, the Bible says that in him we live, in him we move, and what? In him we have our whole being. It's all about Jesus. Just is enough, it's an ambiguous word. Then let's now begin to narrow it into the different areas that we want to describe what Jesus Christ is enough for. So this morning, I will narrow this message to address us. Oh, Jesus is enough for my rest. Jesus Christ is enough for what? My rest. Jesus Christ is enough for my rest. Jesus Christ is enough for your rest. Jesus Christ is the carrier of rest. 
is rest personified. So when you have him, you have rest. When you have him, you ayada kuparada. When you have him, you have rest. The Bible says, who can trouble a man that God has given his rest? Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to verse 11. The Bible says, there remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Verse 11 says, let us therefore enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example. So Jesus Christ has come to bring to us rest. And the Bible says that when we are in Christ, we have entered into rest. When we are in Christ, we have what? We have entered into rest. When we are in Christ, we have entered into what? Into the rest of God. So this morning, by God, as we proceed, what kind of rest has Christ come to give to us? Number one is what I call financial rest. Financial rest. Financial rest. There are a couple of them I covered in the morning in the first service. Rest for your souls. Rest from fruitless labor. And psychological rest. So in this second service, I will speak on financial rest. And I love the way he put it in John chapter 4, verse 38. John chapter 4, verse 38. He said, I have I sent you to reap <laughs> what you have not worked for. In the New Living Translation of NIV. He said, Others have done the hard work. <laughs> and you have reaped the benefit of their labor. Who is the person that this verse is talking to? Hallelujah. He said, I sent you to reap where you have not worked for. Hallelujah. Which means men and women will labor. And God will just favor you. Say, you see that man there? Go and give him. And the things you did not labor for, men will be giving it to you because God has favored you. I believe somewhere in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Mida can look for that. He said, everyone that is good in the sight of God, God has given them favor and wisdom. Everyone that is wicked and bad, God has given them strength. And they will use that strength to gather and to labor. And they will donate it to you and I that are good in the sight of the Lord. What a blessing. Which means everyone hearing my voice that is in debt. By the reason of this rest, that debt is cancelled in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm not hearing your amen. By the reason of this rest, that debt is cancelled in the name of Jesus. By the reason of this rest, that debt is cancelled in the name of Jesus. Everyone hearing me, you are barely living by. You are barely living by. You are barely living by. It's from hand to mouth. That yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you financial rest. May the Lord give you financial rest. Can I hear your Lord the same? What time again? What type of rest again has Christ come to give to us? Number two is all round rest. All round rest. In 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says, See, the Lord has given me rest on every side. Rest on every side. Now, hear me. I said that 2024 will be dark and to be running here and there. But to you, hearing me under my divine constituency, I prophesy on you that you will enjoy rest like no other. Ha -ha -ha. You will enjoy rest like no other. You will enjoy peace like no other. In the name of the Lord Jesus, over the storm that we await in the course of this year, the Lord will be at peace. We bring peace to your storm. We bring peace to your home. We bring peace to your family. Somebody shout the Lord as amen in that building. Say, God has given me rest. Your husband will enjoy rest. Your wife, your children, your siblings, your parents will enjoy rest. The Bible says, Thousands shall fall at my side and at my right hand, but it will not come near you because Jesus has given you what? Rest. Jesus has given you what? Rest. Jesus has given you what? The rest from heaven. Number three, in this second service, what type of rest has Christ come to give to us? I call it eschatology, eternal rest. Eternal rest. Eternal rest. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 57, verse 1 to 2. When your assignment on earth shall be done, in verse 2, the New Living Translation, it said, they shall rest in peace in their individual graves. When your assignment on earth is done, he said you shall rest in peace, which means you will not die anyhow. You hear me, somebody? You will not be burnt to ashes, never. You will not die where your head is here, your leg is there. It will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. You will live to your full old age. Everyone hearing my voice, when that time comes, you will know. You will talk to your loved ones around 
and you will see angels singing to your ears. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Christ has come to give to us that eternal rest. So that when our assignment on earth is done, we shall assess his kingdom where we will live with him forever and ever. Then the question is, what then is the enemy to my rest? What then is the enemy to the promised rest? What then is the enemy to the rest that Christ has come to provide? Your number one enemy to the rest that Jesus Christ offers is the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Every time fear plagues anybody, any church, any family, one of the things it takes us from you is rest and peace. Everywhere that fear evades, the attack of fear on any community, on any individual, is to take away two things from you, uh, to the rest and what? And peace from your life. Just what you have learned that fear will turn your life upside down. Fear will kill your faith and empowers your doubts. Fear will make you doubt the promises of God. <laughs> Fear will always remind you on your birthday what your age is and you forget about God's promises. Fear brings torment. And fear sometimes can kill you before your time. But to everyone hearing me, that yoke of fear is broken out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. What then are the types of fear that we have that we need to address and know? Like I mentioned, the number one is the natural fear, which is the flight or fight. That one is built into our system that helps us to stay protected within our physical environment. That one is a good one. The next type of fear is what I call phobia. Phobia is the excessive fear over some certain things. I have seen so many things. When you see some people with some phobia, you say, my God, are they living? It, it, it minimizes you. It puts you in bondage. That yoke is broken in the name of the Lord Jesus. Number three, like I mentioned, is the satanic fear. This is when the devil plagues your heart that you are afraid of every, everything. Slight sickness. Will I die? Will I die? What about if I die? Now, that fear will take you on a journey. You begin to look potentially into your children's stepmother while you are still alive because of fear. You begin to look potentially into your husband's future second wife when you are no longer there and you are still alive. But fear has killed you, buried you. And make you to be seen a sharp. I never know. Everyone hearing me under the plague of fear is broken out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four is the fear of the unknown. What if? What if? What if? Then my next addendum is that what if not? Rise to your feet, everybody. Rise to your feet, everybody. Fear is a plague. And the moment fear enters, it paralyzes everything that you have ever confessed. Fear of the unknown. What if I sleep and don't wake up? What if I drive and tailor, trailer come and crush me? What if I go to work and I'm implicated and locked in jail? All kind of evil thought and imaginations. Fear of the unknown. And the last but not the least type of fear is what I call eschatological fear. Eschatological fear. In Luke chapter 21 verse 26, Jesus said the heart of men shall fear by the reason of what will be happening. My question to some of you now in New Jersey. On, <laughs> on Friday, were you afraid? Good number of you were afraid. Because you saw your house start dancing. Huh? I had some of you that were on the second floor. You ran. Bam! You ran downstairs. What's going on here? <laughs> That's what you did fear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know someone said something. Say, people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to what? <laughs> eschatological fear. The Bible says we we'll see some fearful things that the heart of men will fail them. The heart of men will fail them. People that they think that they can stand anything, they will see some fearful sight. Fear! But to us as believers, we know it in advance. So when they are happening, we'll be the one educating the world that yes, this one will happen. Yes, there'll be earthquake, there'll be lightning, there'll be thunder, there'll be volcanic eruption. But Jesus says, they that endure to the end shall be saved. That's our consolation. Hallelujah. Eschatological fear. So no believer should be afraid of sorts. Are you hearing me? We should be the ones stabilizing the world and educating them that this is normal. This is normal. Our master have told us that this will happen. Our master have informed us that this will happen. 
so that where you are hearing there and there, because more is going to come, there are going to be more earthquakes. But hear my voice, none of those natural disasters will claim your life. Rada kaka paradokosa. None of those natural disasters will claim your life. Shout the loudest. Amen. You know why we don't pray against some natural disaster because they are prophetic. And as believers, we don't pray against prophetic agenda. You seek for an exemption. Say, Lord, I exempt myself. It will not happen to me. Hallelujah. I exempt myself. When we are coming down to Texas, one of the things those people say, ah, you are going to a natural disaster. <laughs> I say, once we enter there, it can continue, but our area has been marked. <laughs> our area has been marked. Around September, they were distributing some things for all the king. He said, uh -uh. I say, not this area. You call the commander has arrived here. Hallelujah! That is what we do as believers. We take charge. Tell your neighbor, take charge! Hallelujah! Glory be to God. As we pray this morning, by God's grace, how then can I deal with fear and embrace the rest of God? How then can I deal with fear and embrace the rest of God? Proverbs 28 verse 1. The wicked run it when no man pursue it. The wicked run it. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. But the righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous, they are as bold as a lion. How can I deal with fear and embrace the rest? The righteous are as bold. And the righteous are as bold as a lion. The Bible says the lion who is the king of the beast does not turn away from any other. When people are running here and there, the lion will just sit down and be resting and be sleeping. The wicked run it when no man pursue it. But the righteous are as bold. Then the question is, who are the wicked? You are hearing my voice. Your life is not pleasing God. You are considered a wicked man. A wicked man is only one, is only a witch or a wizard or something like that. No. The moment you crucify Jesus the second time, you are a wicked man. Pastor, how can I crucify Jesus the second time? Hear my voice. At this level, you are still lying. At this level, at this level, you are still fornicating. At this level, with the level of truth you have had in this church. At this level, you are still involved in, in, in thefts. At this level, you are still keeping malice, bitterness. At this level of your life, how old are you in Christianity? You are still talking bad about people. When will you change? When will you repent? At this level, even when you are in church, you are, just, you, are just, you are just in church religiously. But your heart is where mosquito, they have put poo, poo in your heart. Very dirty and bitter. At this level, a wicked or a sinful man will always be in a state of unrest. Unrest, 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 unrest. Permit my language. It means sin is chasing you. Your hand and your heart is not clean. What do I tell the rest of God? Jesus said, come to me. Come to me the way you are, but don't remain in me the way you came. Come to me the way you are, but don't remain in me the way you came. Ayaka to say, come to me the way you are, but don't remain in me the way you came. You are a believer of four years old, you are still fornicating? What is, what is going on with your head? What's wrong with your head? You still bloodily tell lies and you are okay? When the world is closing down gradually on us, you have bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, talk ill about people, spread rumors. When the world is shutting down before our eyes, you came to church this morning. You're not talking to your husband, and you are coming to church. And rapture can come now. What will you tell Jesus? I'm not talking to your wife. You, know, you, you sat down by somebody in the church. You wish that person is dead. Will you make evil like this? Will you make evil like this? You are forcefully working under your leader, but you hate that leader. Will you make evil like this? Ah, the end is here. The end is here. The end is here. The rest Christ has promised. This rest can come to you except you repent and change. The wicked runs. 
where nobody is pursuing him. If you want to enjoy this rest, you need to repent. You need to change your ways. You need to tell God, Lord, I mean it this time. I mean it this time. I mean it this time. Listen to me. We are not holiness vampires. Sir. We are not holiness vampires. Since two weeks ago till now, I've been preaching almost every other day. Almost every other day. So there are enough words to preach. We are not holiness vampire. We are not holiness vampire. Holiness without which you know I shall see the Lord. If you are not holy, you will not make heaven. If you are not holy, you cannot enjoy the rest of God. If you are not holy, Jesus can help you. A man is paying your bills because he's sleeping with you and you are sharing testimony in the church. What do you take God for? What do you take God for? You went to go and steal and dupe the system and you are riding a car, you say it's God's glory. The end has come. I would say judgment will begin in the house of God. To everybody hearing my voice, if you want to enjoy this rest, it's available to all, but not everybody can get it because you cannot carry the world and Jesus together. Are you hearing me? You have to forsake the world and embrace Jesus. That is when he will give you that rest. And I pray for you today that you will not fail. Oh, you will not fail in the name of Jesus. Lift up those hands and give Jesus praise. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Exalt and bless his holy name. Appreciate and acknowledge him today. Uh, open your mouth and say, Father, help me. Lord, help my life. Lord, help my life. Lord, help my life. Lord, help my life. Help my life. Open your mouth and pray. The Bible says, let him that take it stand, take his list before. Lord, help my life. Help my heart. Help my ways and my thoughts. Help my destiny. Jesus, I will not perish with the world. Open your mouth and pray. 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 I will not perish with the world. Jesus, give me your rest. Jesus, give me your peace. Jesus, give me your rest. Jesus, give me your peace. Jesus, give me your rest. Jesus, give me your peace. Jesus, give me your rest. Jesus, give me your peace. Thank you, living Father. To God be the glory. In Jesus' most precious and most perfect name we pray. Now place your right hand on your chest. I prophesy on you today that God will give you rest. God will give you rest. God will give you peace in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your home. It shall be well with your inheritance. It shall be well with your destiny. That this new week will favor you and yours. And I seal you and everyone hearing my voice with the blood of Jesus. It is well with your soul. In Jesus most precious and most perfect name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Once again, declare with me, Jesus Christ is enough for my rest. Repeat it again, second time. Jesus Christ is enough for my rest. Repeat it for the third time. Jesus Christ is enough for my rest. Hallelujah. Amen.